years prior, his brother did audio repair work in the house. It didn't take much to put two and two together. I mean, I didn't have solid 100% proof, but to me, I figured they worked out something with a remote and they were playing this over the speaker that was positioned exactly between the grate and the, uh, the chute that was behind the panel. So for me, that was soft. Um, I'm not allowed back there. <laughs> they, they, yeah, they were really mad. Wow. Really, really mad. Um, but, I mean, I also want to note that in the two years since the house was sold to the new owner, who happened to be a ghost hunter, the voice was never heard again. So it was completely off. And the website that reflected the biggest claim, that was the biggest claim they had, changed after my article came out. And uh, it doesn't reflect that anymore. Again, I'm not allowed that. <laughs> uh, witness descriptions. Pay close, to, close attention to the words and phrases that people use to describe their claim. Uh, this is really important because sometimes witnesses commonly use general terms rather than specific terminology. They say like, oh, I saw a ghost and they were in period dress. To me, like in my head, I'm like, what the hell does that mean? I politely say, can you describe that more? Because what period, what time period are we talking about? What class of people are we talking about in that time period? You know, are, are they working? Are they, um, are they upper class? Are they royalty? What are we talking about here? We need more specifics. Experiences and claims will often contain assumptions. This is one that I hear all the time. If you walk into a place and promote positive energy, you will mo most likely get a response from a ghost. I don't know what positive energy means, except you know when I, I work on cars, uh, positive and negative term uh, posts. But other positive and negative energy, I don't know what that means. But they say it, and apparently they get lots of evidence. <laughs> I didn't notice it until I got home. I come across this a lot. Uh, I did an article about a castle, Einsford, Einsford Castle, over in the UK, where a father took his son. They took pictures of this ruined castle, and when they got home, they looked at it and noticed that there was a little black figure in, in the way, way in the background of the photograph. But they didn't look at it until they got home. Didn't know what it was, went online, looked for ghost stories. That's what the father said. He looked for ghost stories, found them. All of a sudden, his black figure was the black monk of this castle. Um, it was a ghost. <laughs> That's how a lot of ghost stories are. I don't, I don't know. But uh, I get this a lot, and, and usually there's nothing to notice. When they're taking the picture, there is nothing to notice. They see it all. It's just a background picture. They're looking at the little LCD screen or looking through the tiny little viewfinder. They don't notice the person wearing a black raincoat. Um, because in the article, when I really investigated it, I found that when I enhanced the picture of the black monk ghost, that the black monk ghost was wearing a, a purse. <laughs> they were wearing a purse that you could see the strap come across their back, uh, and they were just simply taking a picture of the wall in front of them. My son daughter would never lie to me. <laughs> Bullshit. <laughs> um, I come across this a lot, a lot. And it's mostly because of uh, phone apps. There's ghost phone apps that allow you to, with one click, you can add a ghost to any photo in your gallery, in your phone gallery. And I'm constantly getting pictures. And I, I think, um, Robin sent me a picture um, that a father had this picture. It came from his son, who we later found out it came from somebody else. But there was a ghost in the picture. And when I looked at it, I, I recognized what it was. And it took me uh, all five minutes to search uh, ghost apps online, and boom, one of them had it right on their front page, the same exact ghost. Uh, and this is a common thing. It's, it's easy to fool your parents, because your sons and daughters, I know it's, it's a shock, but they do lie to us sometimes. Um, and then home, uh, business owners have used ghost apps the same way. They present this picture that has a ghost app ghost in it, and try to claim that their place is haunted so they can charge a lot of money for ghost hunters to come out and you know spend the weekend. So, yeah, if, if, if you get that phrase, don't believe it. And then always push politely, very politely, for clarification and specific details. Um, that's the best thing. If somebody says, oh, I saw uh, the ghost had a blue shirt on. Okay, well, you know, did it have pockets? Did it have buttons? What color blue? 
because we all know when we go shopping for new paint, like there's 57,000 shades of blue, then it, yeah, it sucks. <clears throat> Lastly, Google it. Um, this is, if you can't get to the location, which I always push that you do, Google. There's a lot of, a lot of online tools that you can use. Google, Google Images, Google Maps. These are great. These help me. And we talked about this today. These help me a lot to figure out some mysteries. eBay, sometimes good. You can find relics from, from a house, a specific house that you might be investigating, or a specific person. Uh, Copyscape, that has helped me with, with alleged paranormal investigation reports because it looks for plagiarism. And I've done, I've, I've actually had reports sent to me from uh, United Kingdom parapsychologists that say this is our investigation report. Here you go. And I found out that. Uh, one big one from Washington State was 87% plagiarized. Hmm. Um, he basically didn't write a damn thing. Um, he copy and pasted everything. LinkedIn, uh, Facebook, Twitter, uh, all these social media sites, people are not as private as they think they are. Hmm. And I'm sure you guys realize this. There's so much. Pictures, relatives, friends. We know what you're having for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and dessert, because people post those pictures. We know where you are, who you're with, so you can search social media. I found Elvis Presley from Home Alone because of social media. Mm -hmm. um, I was able to look him up, find his son, because I, I saw the relation. It's all out there. It's not private. Uh, Wayback Machine mm -hmm. is a great site. Mm -hmm. It archives internet pages so that it, when they're updated or edited, you can look at different versions and find out if people took some information out. Uh, Ancestry.com, newspapers.com. These are archives. You can find family members, who's related to who. You can search newspapers from decades and decades ago. Uh, they're still scanning a lot of them in there, but there's a lot in there. You can look at the original newspaper articles and see if there's information uh, that helps you solve a mystery. And that is it for my talk. I do hope that you learn something, um, even if it's one thing, I do hope you learn and you can take away some skills that you will use later to solve mysteries. And if you do, let us know, because I love hearing this stuff. Hmm. And uh, that's it. I mean, if you have any questions, I don't, I don't know how much time I have. I have no idea. Ten minutes. Ten minutes? So, yeah, if you got questions, go ahead, sir. Uh, have you done any research into repressed memories? No. No, I, I don't. I usually stick strictly with uh, ghosts, paranormal, some UFOs, some Bigfoot, but repressed memories, no. That's out of my wheelhouse. Sorry. Yeah. In one sense, you could consider this a form of harmless entertainment. Why do you disagree if you disagree? It's harmless en entertainment? It's, you know, yeah, I, I'm always on the, the, with the idea that everybody can have their own beliefs. That's, that's cool. But with this kind of stuff, they're pushing their beliefs on other people. And when ghost hunting teams go into a house, a private house, and tell the homeowners, hey, you, you have a ghost, and they're, they're angry, or you have a demon, oh my god, demons, demons, demons. 200 demons in one house, you know, we, we had a story about that. You're scaring the crap out of the homeowners. And for the most part, you don't see the after effects. Like a ghost hunting team usually goes to a house for four or five hours, maybe overnight. And they tell the homeowner, oh, you have this ghost, you have this demon, this and that. And then what do they do? They leave. They don't come back. Now that family is there, especially if they have kids, it, it, you know, adults, kids, doesn't matter. They have anxiety, they don't sleep at night. I did work a case that the homeowner could not sleep, lost his job because he was so scared of being in the house, sold his house for like a ridiculously amount of money below what it was worth because he just wanted to get rid of it. And he was, I mean, when I talked to him, he was like this. He didn't have a condition except fear. He was afraid to be in his own house. And that's the harm that I see. I mean, that's, that's totally ridiculous. And I, I'd like to beat the crap out of the ghost hunting team and did that. So having said all that, which is certainly true, the ghost hunters don't just show up they are invited by the homeowner. Right. Right. Well, the homeowner is looking for, they're looking for answers. So, yeah, they look, reach out to a ghost hunting team 
and they don't know any better. There's ignorance there. And I don't mean that in a mean way, but they don't know what else to think. They call somebody because they go online, they see a ghost hunting team in the area. They say, all right, come out to my house. Tell me what's going on. And now that ghost hunting team looks like an authority figure. They come in, and whatever they say is what goes. Go ahead. Right, but they portray themselves as a ghost hunting team. They've already decided what the answer is right. going in. Yes. I mean, sure, it'd be better if these people contacted you or Joe. I, I totally agree. Right? <laughs> well, but, some of the people are not really the, the ghost hunters show, and I know, I know the ghost hunters. We, we had a, a yeah. meeting together in a, sort of a beer summit. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, a lot of people are, that are invite them are just looking for attention. And, uh -huh. and a lot of them are uh, wanting to be on TV. And they're wanting to promote their bed and breakfast or their, their uh, house that has some, you know, some connection to history. And uh, so there are all kinds of motives. They're not all innocent, I think. That's right. So, yeah, you're, you're answering some of these questions. You've given some answers to what I want to ask. But my big question is, you know, what value is, is there? You know, does it do any good to debunk these things or just keep the sheep living and believing them anyway? People are going to believe what they want to believe. But at least if we go in, I don't go in with a, an attitude that I'm going to debunk it. Even though. Usually that's what it ends up being. I'm usually figuring out what's going on and, and try to give a good explanation. But uh, if I approach it in a polite, professional manner, instead of going in there and just saying, no, they're wrong, they're stupid, they, they don't know what they're talking about, just listen to me. I don't, I don't do that. I go in and we try to recreate things together. And I think Joe covered that, like trying to recreate the impossible or duplicate the results. I try to duplicate their experiences so that they can see for themselves what's causing it. And in, instead of me just saying, well, do steps A, B, C, D, and E, and you'll come out with a conclusion, well, I try to work with them and get them to be the investigator. And then you see the light bulb go on, and they have the Scooby-Doo moment where they figure out what's going on, and they tell me, which is great, because I've done my job. I've helped them with the facts, with the details, what's going on, and they figured it out for themselves, instead of having me or another ghost hunting team tell them what's going on. Does that answer your question? Okay, good. Uh, you were talking about those ghost hunting shows, and you had a picture of Zach Baggins. Yeah. I've heard that uh, they faked or been caught faking um, effects on their shows and similar shows. Have you looked into that at all? Is there any truth to that? <laughs> <laughs> It's just lost a TV show. <laughs> um, but yeah, there, there's something. I, I wrote an article about the Demon House film that he made, that Zach made, and I, I highlight certain aspects of what they did. For instance, they had a, a, a parapsychologist on with a piece of equipment that was on the wrong setting. But they talk about it like it's on the right setting, but they're showing the wrong setting, they're getting the wrong readings. And I pointed that out. It was very simple because, they, I mean, they're holding it up right to the camera. Um, but they missed that. I'm going to go on this side, because I'm kind of biased on this. I'm really curious about, about something that I and I there's no time to really show what you do, but I was really curious sort of what you do in your presentations to the paranormal conventions that you follow. Same thing. Same thing? Yep. Yep. I, I don't change it up for anyone, um, whoever's watching it, because the last, the last presentation I did was for a skeptic group in D.C., and then before that, it was a mixed company. It was believers, skeptics, people that didn't really care. They just saw there was a lecture going on, and they came in and sat down. But I don't, I don't cater to any one belief system or one group of people. You know, this is, I'm transparent. This is what it is, and when I when I talk, I talk the same way to you that I talk to anybody else with different beliefs. Um, I have been I have guilty pleasure, and just recently um, I started watching the Carbonaro Effect. Have you heard of the show? Anybody? Yes. Yeah. yeah. Right, True TV, where it's a magician mm -hmm. who sets up situations, and you know, the people don't know that he's a magician. Something happens, and there's all these paranormal, and then he lets them know. It's just been a lot of fun. I didn't know if you were aware of it or watched it. 
Oh yeah, yeah, I've watched yeah. it. I get a kick out of it too. I love when people are like, you see the looks like, oh crap, how'd you do that? And yeah, and I'll, yeah a lot love, of fun. Love that show. Anybody else? Yeah, yes sir. Uh, I'm really curious about, uh, it's clear that some people express a lot of anger when some of these things are covered. Mm -hmm. I'm curious about what you're doing was, what the source of this anger might be. Because in some cases it might be that you're, um, you're taking away, you're debunking something they had set up and they're, they're angry about being caught. But in other cases, do you think that they're just angry because you've taken away something that they really believed that was, uh, was part of what they are, they had great story to tell, and now those things no longer exist? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, I mean, the belief, belief is a powerful thing. Yeah. I and mean, once you get into it, it becomes your core belief. And, and for, for the people that I deal with, which is mostly ghost hunting teams, they invest thousands and thousands of dollars into it. And when someone like me walks in and goes, well, did you think of this? Did you try this? Did you look at this? And it completely destroys their idea of what's going on. Then it's that, that idea like, oh, I just spent thousands. For, for example, quick example, they, you know what the Xbox is, gaming system? And the Kinect that goes with it. it. It lets your body become the control. Great, great game, I love it. I keep dancing and everything. It's, it's fun. Ghost hunters have taken that Xbox Connect and adapted it to finding ghosts. And, and certain ghost hunting stores, entrepreneurs, bullshitters, have sold this. Um, they repackage it. They actually 3D print a new case for the Connect. Take the guts out of the actual Connect, put it in their 3D printed box, and then they sell it with a with a little tablet and a handle for 1500 bucks. You can get an Xbox Connect at a thrift store for $5. And it plugs right into your laptop, does all the same thing. Microsoft released the software for it for free. So you can, you can adapt it, whatever you want. So I do the exact same thing for $5 that all these ghost hunters do for 1500 bucks. And once I tell them, I wrote an article for Skeptical Inquirer for CSI, <coughs> detailing everything about it. I contacted Microsoft, got all the faults, figured out what they were doing wrong, and present this. And yes, I have gone to the paranormal conferences where they're like, people have come up to me and actually thanked me, even though they wasted all their money. Um, but others have come up and, I mean, they're angry, I've gotten death threats, I've got all this crap, like because of a toy. Um, but they, they come up and really pissed off because they spent all that money and I just told them, I showed them, it doesn't work. It doesn't work the way they think it does. So, yeah. It's an investment, yeah. It, personal, yeah. I mean, the belief, the, the personal, the, the money is just one aspect of it. But yeah, I mean, they, they have beliefs, they, they grew up with, they've been doing these for years. They have that authority. When you, go, if you ever go to a paranormal convention or conference, I suggest you do it. Try it. Just to, just watch, just watch the people and see how authoritative they are. They, they have their table set up with tons of equipment that doesn't do a damn thing that they think it does. But they, they have their photographer's vest that they have all the pockets shoved with stuff that they don't need and batteries, lots of batteries. Those go strain batteries, we know that. Um, and they have these tables set up and they're, they're talking, anybody that comes up and says, oh, what's this do? Oh, this is, this is high tech, this is the most advanced ghost hunting equipment ever. Um, and they, they try to sell to you, hundreds of dollars. They try to sell it, 3D printed. Most of them are 3D printed now. And they have lights. If it has lights and it makes noises, woo! <laughs> cash cow. Cash cow. Most of the devices that I play with now that I test have one circuit board in it. A Thurman Jr. circuit board. And I won't get into specifics, but look up a Thurman device. It's really cool. But one little thing, you buy it on eBay from madlab.com. 20 bucks. I put it together in a half hour. I can do all the same noises and lights that they do. And they spend $150, $300 for a little toy that has the same little circuit board in it. What's that saying? Med, M-A-D-L-A-B, madlab.com. It's 20 bucks. It's called a Junior Thurman kit. Um, one more question, I think, and then we'll go. One more. 
I worked with aerospace engineers, scientists, and very highly educated people. And within that group, there were a lot of people who were UFOs and aliens. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I attend all these different conferences. I go to MUFON conferences for UFOs. I go to Bigfoot things just to see what people do and what they say. And I come across the same people. And you ask, I had, I 